Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Kyle Checky. I'm a resident at Naval Medical Center San Diego. I'd like to thank the selection committee uh, for the privilege to present our work and my co-authors for their contributions to this project. I'll be presenting my team's initial experience with treating uh, service members who are challenged by obesity with the intragastric balloon. I don't have any financial uh, disclosures to make, and I have the standard military disclosure that these views are my own. A fairly standard outline, I'm going to talk about the trends in obesity um, and some of the policies uh, that the Department of Defense has, um, and then I'll then describe our procedure uh, for treating these patients in detail and present our initial uh, results. Uh, so in a slide now made famous by Dr. Souza this morning, um, it's clear that obesity is an increasing problem for the military. I won't make any inter-service commentary because I'm a resident, um, but uh, the overall uh, trend is concerning, uh, both in its prevalence at 8% and um, the trend is going up. This will cause significant uh, challenges for the service, uh, both in retaining um, these service members and in readiness. This will be especially problematic if uh, specially trained individuals start uh, being lost when they can't return within height and weight standards. But I also want to focus on the individual uh, consequences of obesity because it's important to remember these are patients challenged by a medical condition associated with comorbidities uh, that can be treated. Um, and obesity is known to cause um, significant um, comorbid conditions, uh, decreased quality of life. Um, and for these patients, they uniquely face the challenge of financial loss and loss of benefits if they're separated from active duty. So we'd like to do something for these patients. Um, we know that bariatric surgery um, is successful treatment for obesity. We know it results in regression and sometimes resolution of these comorbid conditions. It results in sustained weight loss and also improves the quality of life of these patients. When done using minimally invasive techniques, there's reduced postoperative pain, um, fewer complications, I and mean, the patients can return to active duty. We know that bariatric surgery is safe um, from the existing literature. However, uh, the current DOD policy remains that permanent uh, bariatric surgery for active duty personnel is not permitted under any circumstance, and the current recommendation is to separate these patients if they're not able to return within height and weight standards uh, through diet and exercise. Um, since the development of this policy, new technologies have uh, come to bear. Uh, the one that I'll be talking about is the temporary endoscopic intragastric balloon. In an admittedly industry-sponsored study, but that was prospective, randomized, uh, sham controlled, um, and blind, uh, patients that received the intragastric balloon and were treated for six months experienced 25% excess body weight loss, compared to patients in the control group who lost 11% uh, with diet and exercise alone. They did have to retrieve 9% of devices early uh, for non-ulcer-related complications, but no other severe complications were observed in that study. So our institution is treating patients, uh, active duty patients challenged by obesity with the intragastric balloon. My goal is to describe our initial experience treating these patients, um, and our primary outcome will be change in BMI, percent excess weight loss, um, and to present some complications. Uh, and then our secondary outcomes will be service relevant for the BCA, PRT, and PFA results. So we have a standard protocol for treating these patients. Prior to placement, all enrolled patients qualify, uh, must qualify for the IGB based on the FDA guidelines. They have to participate in our standard pre-procedural risk mitigation medical evaluation and complete NIH guideline prerequisites for bariatric surgery. Um, so they go through our basic uh, bariatric surgery program. And um, then they also have to obtain command authorization prior to their IGB placement. After the placement, we follow them at regular intervals, both with the bariatric surgeon and our dietitian um, as part of a year-long structured lifestyle modification program. Um, the data that I used for this analysis was retrieved from our IRB-approved bariatric program registry and also from the medical record. The procedure is done in our combined endoscopy center under IV conscious sedation by minimally invasive uh, fellowship-trained bariatric surgeons or residents under direct observation. It's a same-day procedure and involves four basic steps. The first um, is a diagnostic um, endoscopy, just to make sure that the stomach uh, doesn't have any pathology that would prevent placement of the balloon. Second, the balloon is introduced. Third, the balloon is filled with saline, which is tinted with methylene blue. Um, and then six months later, the final step of the procedure is that the balloons are pierced um, and the device is removed. 
To date, we've treated six patients. Um, I only have complete follow-up data for five of those patients. Um, looking at the characteristics of the six patients, we can see that they're young. They're evenly distributed between male and female. Um, and they have comorbidities that are typical for patients that are challenged by obesity, um, although they are uh, very young. You see um, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, sleep apnea, um, and insulin resistance, and also musculoskeletal um, injuries that they're dealing with. For the five patients that we have complete data for, um, all five have had a decrease um, in their BMI post intragastric balloon. The average change has been negative 1.8, uh, which reached statistical significance, uh, as did the percent excess weight loss, which was 14%. However, we do have uh, complications uh, that I need to mention. Uh, our most significant complication was a gastric perforation, which required device removal and a laparoscopic gastric repair. That patient did do well, um, discharged and went back to active duty. And then there were two minor complications. Two patients had significant nausea and vomiting. One of those patients required, uh, required device removal. The other was able to be managed uh, with the device being left in place. As far as BCA, PRT, and PFA results, um, we had to rely on survey data initially. Uh, we don't have access uh, to the PRIM system. Uh, but for the 40% uh, responders, one patient failed their BCA prior to the intragastric balloon and passed thereafter. The other patient actually passed their BCA prior to the balloon and also passed afterwards. Both of these patients passed their physical readiness tests, both before and after uh, their intragastric balloon. And one patient actually completed a PRT with the intragastric balloon in place. Um, and passed and didn't experience any issues with that. Um, to try to get an estimate of the remaining patients who um, may have achieved uh, satisfactory BCA outcomes after the intragastric balloon, um, I relied on BMI, uh, which we do have access to, but is admittedly uh, somewhat flawed. Um, but using BMI 35 as a cutoff uh, for getting within BCA standards, four of the five patients had uh, pre intragastric balloon BMIs over 35, and three of those patients uh, fell below 35 at the conclusion of their intragastric balloon. One patient had a pre and post uh, intragastric balloon um, BMI that was less than 35. So in conclusion, uh, the intragastric balloon appears to be an effective temporary non-surgical weight loss procedure available to active duty patients challenged by obesity. Um, but further research is needed. This is just our initial experience. We need to determine if the IGB can truly improve readiness, increase retention of personnel, and improve individual health benefits in order to justify wider utilization in our active duty personnel. Um, we're also uh, working on looking at this data more longitudinally to determine if the results are durable. Um, and with that, I welcome any comments or questions at this time.